So you want to be a web developer and you're writing out your resume, but what should you and should you not include in your CV? Let's talk about that today. Hello and welcome to another How To Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. Today we're going to look at CVs and resumes and we're going to discuss what to include and what not to include when you're applying for a new web development position. Perhaps you are going from a junior to a senior position or maybe you've just come out of university, just come out of study and you're applying for a position, a web development position and you are not sure what to include on your CV, your resume. Well, the first point that I wish to get out of the way is uh, getting your CV professionally written. And if you can afford that, if you have the resources to do that, then by all means, go ahead and do that. That's a very good idea to do. If you can't do that though, then there are some quick tips that I can give you, some advice that I can give you on things to include and what not to include on a technical resume for a web development position. So the first thing to remember is the what I'm terming the three levels of assessment that your, your CV goes through. Now, it might not be this much, it could even be more, but you have to think about the audience, the audience who your CV is going to be shown to. So the first one might be the recruitment agent and the recruitment agent will have lots and lots of CVs and it's they get loads like after university is finished. So your CV needs to stand out from the rest, right? So they're going to be assessing that on things like uh, skill and presentation and all of that stuff. Um, and then it goes, it gets filtered down to and be given to the, the actual company. The company will then look at the CVs. Maybe it's going to be a team leader. Maybe it's going to be HR and then they give it to a, a team leader. Um, a development team leader or the, the actual developers themselves. So the second audience is the actual company. They're going to be looking at the select few resumes that have been filtered from the recruitment agent, if they're using a recruitment agent, of course. Now, there's no reason why you can't just directly apply to a company. So these three levels might not apply. The last level is the actual developers themselves, the people that you might be luckily working for or working with, sitting by, those kind of people. Now, each person, each, each uh, assessment stream, if you will, will be looking for different types, different things in the CV because they'll have different experiences and different requirements and different needs and different priorities. So the recruitment agent, for example, is all about sending good quality candidates to the company. The company is all about filtering out the, the candidates and showing them to the developers. And the developers, of course, will all be concerned about the technical skills and experience that you've got, as well as if you're a good fit in the team. So let's talk about the recruitment agent first. The recruitment agent will be looking for certain keywords, certain things in your CV that the company has asked to filter through. So for example, it could be a symphony uh, company, a company that just uses symphony. That is the key, that is the thing, that is the, the tick. If you've got si symphony on your CV, then that's a good thing. Then they'll be looking for years of experience. So they'll be assessing whether you're a senior, whether you're a junior, uh, how long have you been working in these fields? And also what have you been doing if you've been made redundant? Have you been have you been able to continue your personal development? Or have you just jumped from one job to another job? All of those kind of things. Now the company will be looking at all of that stuff, but they'll also be looking at uh, the things that you say, the, the what I call the story about, the, about you, whether you'll be a good fit to work in the team, whether your personality works, because the recruitment agent possibly won't know about the personality of the team, right, from, from a granular level, but the company certainly will, the HR department will, the development team leaders will, they'll, they'll know whether or not, when they're reading a CV, whether it's a good fit. So the company, the development team leaders, they'll know whether the CV is coming from maybe a socially awkward person, those kind of things, those kind of um, words that you put into the CV to talk about your previous experience as well as your interests. And remember, your interests shouldn't just be 
uh, web development and programming. It should also be other things as well. Maybe, for instance, the team has a lot of runners. Maybe they do a lot of running. Maybe they have a running team on that team, you know, a social event type thing. So they'll be looking, if, if you put, say, a runner on there, then they'll know that you may, maybe you'll adapt quite well with the team. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. The next is the actual developers themselves. So they'll be looking at the technical skills and the experience that you have got on your um, resume. So they're gonna be interested in not only the languages and the frameworks, but also, also the versions. This is very important, the versions. So don't just say it's Symfony, don't just say it's Laravel, don't just say it's Cake PHP, or, or C or Python, say the specific versions of the languages and frameworks that you're using, right? Symfony 2 is very different from Symfony 1. Zend 1 is very different from Zen 2, okay? If the company is just working on Symfony 2 or 3, then they're not going to be very interested in a Symfony 1 developer. So it's very important to actually put down the versions. Um, and don't just list every little piece of technology that you you've just sort of glanced over actually put the technology that you're using so the developers will be filtering out the chaff okay they'll be like well hang on a minute you've only got an, like two years worth of experience and yet you've listed a whole shopping list of stuff so I'm going to be incredibly skeptical on that I've mentioned before that you shouldn't ever sort of lie when it comes to the CVs as well as the interviews. You want to ensure that what you put down on your CV will allow them to talk through the points and actually pick out the CV, pick out your experience and stuff. So if you put on anything that is a red flag or if you if you mention something that you've only spent say a half an hour um, looking at technology wise, then that is not a good good thing. You're being hired to do a specific job. You're being hired because of your experience and your technical skills. If your technical skills and experience are just a load of waffle and a lie, then you're not a very good fit and you're, it's basically not genuine, right? That's just, just don't do it. So we've covered the assessment levels, but what should you actually put on the CV? Well, one thing that every web developer should put and every programmer should put on a CV is links. Remember, you're a web developer. If you don't put any links in your CV, then you're not using the web, right? So you need to have links, you need to have links. And a pro tip here is to use Bitly or other services that can URL shorten your links down. Not only is it going to save space on the CV because you don't want to be giving someone pages and pages and pages of CV, but you'll also be able to track those links. So you'll be able to see when someone is actually clicking on those links. Another thing is to not be afraid of the unconventional uh, CVs and resumes. So for example, you could have uh, a website CV. You could even use a GitHub pages CV you know, a GitHub Pages website, which is free because it's a GitHub Pages uh, site, that could be a, a written in Markdown, which is your CV. Now, as, as long as you've got uh, the, the correct formats, the PDFs, the Word documents, and so forth, as long as that can be easily generated into those things, then there's no reason why you can't do that. And hey, I've just mentioned GitHub. GitHub is a very, very good a mechanism to actually show the code and display your technical abilities. The fantastic thing about GitHub and Bitbucket is the fact that you can actually look at the history, right? So you can look at the commit history, you can actually see someone progress in their technical skills. So the first year, the first bit, uh, Bitbucket GitHub repository might have a lot of code in there that is not good right but the most recent stuff that's most recent committed stuff might have stuff which is fantastic so you can actually see a timeline of progression you can also see what technologies they're interested in what what languages you're you're playing with and so forth and also the times in which you commit those things maybe they're personal projects also you can actually see the commit messages so you can actually see how the person constructs their commit messages, which is so good because it gives you a flavor, an idea of how disciplined they are when actually writing and committing and merging and, and writing PR requests and all sorts of stuff. So GitHub, Bitbucket, great. You're a web developer, 
you use the web, you probably, you should have used a project, an open source project that is on GitHub and Bitbucket. So why don't you put your CV on those things as well? Or at least put the, the projects or the, the stuff that you've been working on, on that too. And then link that to your CV. Your CV should be straight to the point. This is who I am, this is what I know, this is what I've experienced and so forth. Don't talk about your weekend plans or your what you like to do on your summer holidays and all of that stuff. It's not really a story. If someone wants to read a story, then they'll buy a book. Please don't write marketing buzzwordy type CVs. You're a developer, not a marketeer, okay? They're, they're different, totally different. And the next and final thing that I would like to mention about CVs slash resumes is that they should be written specifically for the company as well as specifically for the role. That's a bit of a loaded point, so I'll, I'll break that up a little bit. Your CV, your resume, should be written specifically for that role. If that role is a symphony role, make sure you have symphony in there. If that role is a medical role, right, and you've done some medical projects, then highlight the medical projects over anything else. So you're gearing, you're tailoring your application to the company, okay? So it's not uncommon to have lots of different variants of your resume that go out to different people, different companies and different organizations. And also your application should be tailored towards the position that you're going for. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a junior position is very different from a senior position, okay? So you've got a junior and you've got a senior. They're both very different. They're both, they should have different experiences. Personally, I'm not a fan of junior versus senior. Um, again, I'm all about the experience and whether you've been experienced certain things than other people. But when you're being put and assessed through the recruitment agents, um, they like to put you in these boxes, right? So you've got a junior and you've got a senior and blah, 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 blah. So you, you want to tailor your application to those kind of levels of experience. So a junior, for example, won't have the same experience as a senior, obviously. So a senior will might have experience on looking after a team, looking after a situation, a system, um, uh, looking after the deployment process, where I'm saying looking after, being in charge of maintaining, being responsible for, those kind of words you need to include. A junior, however, or someone who's just come fresh out of university won't have that. Okay, so it's very different. So a junior might be saying, I've worked on, I was part of a team, I, I, I helped do this, I was part of a team that worked on that. So there's a difference in language, right? There's you're more responsible, you've got more responsibilities and you should emphasize that. You should talk about that when you're applying for your senior position. The difference is when you, you're a junior and you're going to a senior. So you've got to talk about why you want to move to, to a senior position and so forth. 